My name is Sasha Radicic. I am originally from uh, former Yugoslavia. I came here with my wife and daughter in, uh, in 98. So um, I am a guitar maker and some people call it luthier. So um, I've been making guitars about 30 plus years now. You know, I, when I was growing up, I didn't have a guitar. I had to make me a guitar. And uh, I lay a couple of times hands on expensive guitars, but I couldn't buy them. So I decided to make them. I do make um, classical guitars, steel string guitars, electric guitars. I even make a German zitters. Well, I lived in Germany for six years and made a couple hundred German zitters as well. I hate to say that, but the difference is huge. <laughs> because um, uh, those uh, factory-made guitars are made by thousands or hundreds on the on assembly line. So people who make these, or well, lately this made by robots, I think, mostly. And it's assembly line where they really do not have a time to fine-tune the uh, top and the back, for example. And attention to the detail is really minimal. This is exactly the thing that they, those people in factories would not have a time to, you know, kid in that much. You just cut would not clean it, just put it in, you know. So, I, however, know it's really important not to have anything in the corner. So I will spend some time on, on these little things. With these uh, factory made guitars, they never get to tune the top by hand by one person. Okay, uh, in factories. 20, 30, 40, maybe more people working on one guitar. One puts the neck together, the, uh, the other puts the frets, and the third person works on a reset, and uh, somebody uh, works on a thickening the top, if they ever do it, and I doubt it. So the difference is when I, when I tune the top, I tune the top to a certain pitch, so the back and the top are never the same pitch. They differ. So I turn, tune, tune bow to a certain pitch uh, to give uh, the best of a sound possible out of that particular piece of wood. And the top is finally calibrated by me and I, and I need a peace and quiet and a, you know, few, for a few days till I really get the top uh, to a certain thickness. And the top isn't really the same thickness all over. You know, it's, uh, for example, here is way thinner than here. So it's a very complicated thing to do. And, you know, in fact, they really don't have the time. Uh, when I make guitars, I go uh, from start, which is hand picking my wood. Like, let's say I go and buy the wood, buy the tops, buy the backs and sides. And I often do what I don't do. I tap the wood and see, you know, what's the frequency. So same applies for, you know, for, for everything. Uh, whether it's a steel string, nylon string guitar, even uh, electric guitar, electric bass. The wood has its own nature, resonancy, and pitch that you have to take care of. You have to know it. This particular guitar is a custom order for a young woman who is uh, uh, at university and uh, she requested uh, certain materials to be used for, uh, for her custom guitar and I will go briefly over uh, what is this guitar made of. It's uh, East Indian Rosewood back and sides it's a Honduran mahogany neck. It's a um, African, actually it's a Gabon, Gabon ebony. Uh, headstock is also uh, East Indian rosewood as well as this bridge. So it's pretty much going to look like this. And uh, the most important 
is actually an ever guitar is a top. So there's a two um, materials we usually uh, put uh, on classical guitars. Uh, this is, in this case, cedar. It's a it's called Western Red Cedar. It comes from Washington State. And uh, the other tops that we the, the other material that we use is also uh, spruce. So uh, she uh, prefers the uh, cedar because of of warmth of its sound and it has a charming depth and it really uh, has a nice singing troubles. There's so many choices but uh, this is a called a, a custom guitar. Now because of physical size of uh, each of us, uh, some of us have a bigger hand, some have a smaller hands uh, she preferred that her scaling stays pretty much a standard 650 millimeter length, but she required, for example, a little narrower neck at a nut, at a little narrower neck at a 12 fret, and that particularly is perfect for 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 her hands. And uh, then she, me and her were having a long talk, you know, about all details, uh, like. Uh, as, as I recall, she did not want the, the, the veneer between uh, um, headstock overlay and mahogany. She did not want anything. She did not want any of the back strip, which you usually can see on, on, the, on the seam. These are uh, made out of two halves, book match halves, but it's so finely joined that you cannot see the joint, actual joint. And often you will see two lines here dividing a back and two. Well, she did not want that. Well, then she had a requirement for the binding to be Indian rosewood also. You can see them sometimes in maple, in uh, red color, in uh, walnut. Uh, many choices, many choices. So we had to go over, you know, quite a few things before she said, yes, I want this. Well, then also she picked the rosette. I had a stash of the rosettes. These are handmade rosettes in Germany. And she picked this one. And I totally understand why she picked that one because this color is just perfect match for the cedar top. And the cedar, once it gets finished on it, beautiful, uh, um, what's the word, beautiful, tan color, you know, it's not pale, it's kind of warm to look and beautiful to listen. So uh, then she made a choice about the purfling on the top, which is black, white, black, white. And then she also wanted a single white purfling next to the binding and single white here. Uh, if I did not put the single white between Indian rosewood binding and Indian rosewood back, it would not be this, you know, difference. So one tiny maple purfling just makes sense, just like it's right here. So if you look from this side, it's a uh, Indian white, Indian rosewood white. So it's a harmony. Um, then she also requested a, a, a nice uh, C shape of the back of the neck and uh, uh, standard size threads. So, and then after that, we also talked about these and these are uh, Japanese tuners and I will attach them to demonstrate how it is going to look once it's assembled. Well, as a treble side and as a bass side, and that's they got fixed by the four screws when finish is applied totally. So this comes to the end, like a, um, when the finish is applied, I'm gonna do, do the bridge, put the machines on, make a nut out of uh, bone. And uh, there's a bone which comes on the uh, a bridge um, in, in this slot here, it's called saddle. So, and then it's gonna be a matter of, you know, setup, setting up the height of the strings, 
like I said, everything can be done after the finish is applied. And uh, it, 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 it will be a uh, satin finish. She did not want a shiny guitar. She wanted a satin look. And for that reason, I suggested these high quality Japanese tuners, which are also done in, in, in a so-called satin finish. It's a brass, but it's satin. It's not shiny, and I think it's a really a good marriage of uh, satin finish to be and these tuners. It's going to be in harmony again. Carefully reamed out with the uh, special tools that I have, so they have a. They when, once you put them inside, they have to have a little what Germans would say luft, a little space. So when the strings pressure is applied on the cylinder here, it actually pulls it down to the wood, and you don't want the hole uh, to be too narrow for this shaft. So it's, it's cuts, if it is, it starts screeching inside and, and making you know noises. So give it a little uh, uh, space so they can feel, they can, you know, work smooth and, and nice. When I uh, file the, the, the notches in the nut, they have to be uh, very carefully um, filed in. Uh, you go a little too deep and you're going to get the buzz up against the first fret. Each of these files that I'm uh, cutting notches on the nut are special size and they actually match the thickness of a string. The German would say fein geschliffen. It's a bone which is finally sanded. There you go. Um, be below the sh shiny surface, you can somewhere see very slight marks on the file. Which, if somebody looks carefully, you know, under the scope, they will see those file marks and I leave them intentionally there because it says it's handmade. And uh, now we're just going to a, uh, put these strings on and uh, do, you know, setup. The, the strings that I put on uh, this guitar um, uh, were actually high tension strings, nylon strings. And those strings will stretch for a few days once you put them on. Uh, so basically one has to be patient um, to uh, Put strings on and then tune and retune and retune and after uh, three to five days the strings finally settle down. tension on and measure the height here and the strings will be removed a couple of times to set this and this again. Well, these will get out off and on. 
I've done a couple of adjustments on a, a height here, string action height. Uh, now I'm happy where it is. And uh, there's that little ruler that usually says here, uh, standard guitar should be 4mm and 3mm. Uh, from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. So it's 4mm for the bass and 3mm for the treble. Now she uh, did want a little narrower neck, a little bit more comfortable to play, so I actually made a, a string action a little bit lower for her hand. So um, I got this here at about 3.5mm on a bass string and about 2.8 millimeter on the treble, which is be even more comfortable for the left hand, especially left hand when you grip the chords. Not so much for the right hand because right hand, it really doesn't feel the height as the left hand does. Uh, well, this is the guitar. This is now ready for the uh, young woman. And this will, uh, we have, uh, um, two identical sizes of my classical guitars, uh, which is medium size, and both are in cedar tops and both are Indian rosewood, back and sides. So uh, also the 650 millimeter is applied to both guitars, and uh, the dimension of the boxes is nearly the same. Uh, but um, her guitar top has actually a slight improvement. Uh, on the top, in a top construction, uh, it's a it's a refinement of a bracings uh, on its top, resulting in a slightly different sound. So uh, this one is different from that one. So this one has a, a slightly more powerful sound, more present sound. So um, I hope she is going to like it very much. When we are younger, uh, we grab whatever we have. So we play instrument which can which, which can we afford. And often it's not enough. The, the sound isn't as, as fine, uh, as um, as rich and as a, as, a, as a handmade guitar. So uh, as the people grow up and uh, you know refine their skills in playing, they develop the ear so uh, for the good sound. And uh, that's, I think, where the uh, uh, needs for the uh, finer instrument comes into place. And that's what it is. Um, uh, finely custom-made, handmade guitar, which is going to have punchy and long-lasting trebles, like a rich palette of colors, like even, you know. Uh, lots of guitars will you know, that's a low end guitar will have a, like uneven notes down the fretboard. So this one is punchy and even. Yeah, the person has to be a musician, that's for sure. This is something in our nature, I guess. I cannot imagine the planet Earth without, you know, musical instruments. It would be incomplete. 
So uh, the point of this tool is to actually uh, produce a as wonderful sound as, as it can get. So we can all enjoy. It's all about the feelings at the end. We enjoy the music and a lot of us enjoy mu listening to music, but uh, some of us, actually quite a few of us, enjoying a making a music. Well, I came a little bit uh, further than that. I enjoy making them, and then I enjoy playing them, and then, of course, I'm enjoying listening to music.